Hey Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel where we are a community of collectors. If you are new to this channel, welcome to the Potter Collector community. We would love to have you join. So if you like what you see, please consider subscribing below. As you can see, I am back in the Potter Collector library. It has been a while since I have filmed a video in here. So I am very happy to be back in the mothership. One thing I want to mention before we get into the unboxing, the Sunshine Daisies Buttermello shirt from year one of the Ask -a Box. I will be announcing the winner of this shirt in the next Ask -a Box unboxing video, which should be in the next week or two. If you entered to win this shirt, make sure you watch that video to see if you are the winner. All right, there are four things for me to open. Four. Two of them are very special. One of them is extremely special. One of them is signed. This is a book that I have been looking for and wanting for a long time. And finally one became available. So thank you very much to John, who I knew had it, for coming to me and offering it to me first. And then we have two more books. I don't know what they are. Oh, one is from Finland. I do know what this is. So let's just open this up since uh, we already know what it is. Another thing I want to mention is I have a massive stack of things to review for videos that I need to finish. There are going to be a lot of review videos coming in the next few months. Cine Replicas sent me both of their robes as well as an additional robe to give away to one of you. Um, so we're going to look at their Quidditch robes and also compare the Wizarding World of Harry Potter robes to the Cine Replica robes. Mattel sent me their Harry Potter doll line, so I need to do a review on that. I have a Geek Gear box as well as a Loot Crate box. I'm going to do a comparison video of those two boxes, open them together. There are so many Noble Collection items that I have to review as well. All of the Horcruxes. There are a lot of fun videos on the way. So if you're not subscribed and not following, make sure you subscribe to keep up with all of these incredible items that I'm looking at right over here. This is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in Finnish. But what's special about this copy is it has the American cover art by Mary Grand Pre. This is the normal Finnish book that we all know. Everyone has big noses. And Tammy is the publisher. The name was drawn out of the Goblet of Fire. It's, it's uh, Tammy was selected. If you look at all of those covers, you can find a secret Tammy reference on each of the covers. And these are the other, oh wait, that's Philosopher's Stone. And these are the other Finnish editions. We have the adult paperback uh, pocket edition, as well as the Mary Grand Prey hardcover that I just unboxed. Now, I believe that they only printed books one through four in this cover art format. I have one and four, but I actually have never seen two or three. If you have one in your collection or have a photo of one that you could send to me, I would love to see them. Here's the next book to open. Oh, this is Harry Potter in Greek. It must have been inexpensive, so I purchased it to use as a trade or to sell in a future Potter Collector Instagram book sale. This next box contains French books that came from the UK. Wow, they're so big. I am so excited that they are finally here. I still need two more in the set, so I need um, Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hollows. So if anyone has any that they would be willing to sell to me for a reasonable price, because these can get pretty expensive, Please let me know. These are books one through five in the French Deluxe Edition. <laughs> They're so beautiful and colorful. Let's go through them one by one. I have books one and two in this edition, so these guys here will end up in a future Potter Collector Instagram book sale. If you're not following the Potter Collector on Instagram, make sure you do that. The colors on these are so vibrant. Each one has a different colored theme to it. The artwork, all around this slip case is phenomenal. This is artwork done by JC Goatin. The book on the inside has this nice square pattern, as well as a square of the cover art that we know from the uh, other book covers. The text block has a nice shiny gold gilding all around it. And then when you open up the book, there's artwork on the inside as well, on the front end paper and the back of the front cover. And then the same on the back cover and the back end paper. Here is Chamber of Secrets, which has an orange colored theme, back cover, and the book itself. You of course see the artwork on here, and this orange book, the gold gilding on the text block, 
and what I can only assume to be the Chamber of Secrets on the front, and Harry and Ron on their way to help Ginny Weasley on the back. There's one thing that I love about this artwork, and it is Ron's broken wand. It's little details like that that make a good illustrator. Next up is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is the first time I am actually seeing one in person. Again, the, the coloring is so vibrant. I love seeing the artwork front and back. The book on the inside is a beautiful blue with, again, that cover art. On the front, we have Harry and Hermione on Buckbeak and the rest of the artwork on the back. I have also not seen Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in this edition, so this is also exciting. On the front we have Harry with his wand, and he's clearly looking at the dragons. So Hagrid has taken Harry and Madame Maxime to check out the dragons, what the first task is going to require him to do in the Triwizard Tournament. Inside a bright, beautiful, yellow gold book with that gold gilding, of course. And then on the inside we... Oh wait, oh wait, this isn't even on the slipcase. There's additional artwork on the inside here. So it looks like we have Padfoot here and Floor Delacour, I'm guessing, in the third task. So it's kind of like a mixture of the third task and the first task, or pre-first task. And then in the back, oh nice, you can see the full artwork that I was just talking about before in all of its glory. So Harry looking at the four dragons and the dragon handlers, very, very cool. And last but not least is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So we have Harry and Ron and Hermione on the front with a phoenix in the background, looks like. Then on the back we have some students and Professor Snape. No, I think it's just a portrait, but it looks kind of like Professor Snape in here in the portrait. And then the book is a teal color artwork on the front, shiny gold on the text block. And then the front of the book on the inside, we have that artwork again we have Hermione's face. I'm guessing that Ron and Harry are in the back of the book. Actually, it's all three of them. Oh, and it looks like that phoenix was actually a tapestry on the wall. That was pretty clever of Mr. Goatine. They're standing in front of a tapestry which shows a phoenix. And then I don't know who these people are, but maybe they're the High Inquisitor squad or something like that. So these are books one through five of the French Deluxe Edition. I still need six and seven. So if you have some that you would like to sell, put a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram. And and I will get back to you. A huge shout out to Adam for offering me these books. I am so grateful to have these and add them to the Potter Collector collection. Now on to the main event, the signed book. I have known of two of them in different collections and finally this one became available. I am so excited to have this in my collection at last. Now here's the thing about this book. I don't know a ton about the origin of it, the exact date it was signed, but I will definitely be doing research to fill in the gaps of my knowledge on this piece. John also sent along a article, a newspaper article, that references this particular signing, but we're pretty sure that the month that the newspaper article says that the book was signed in is incorrect, and I'll tell you about that in a second. All right, here we go. Ooh, I'm so excited! Okay. All right, it's a copy of Philosopher's Stone. It's a fifth printing, so it is the last of the printings to have this quote, a terrific read and stunning first novel by Wendy Cooling on the front. So it's a fifth printing. <gasps> oh, wow. This is just magic. I need to just take this in for a second. If you've seen some of my other signed videos in the past, you've heard me talk about 1997 signatures and how they are, well, for sure, the rarest variation of Joe's signature because no one knew about Harry Potter, no one knew about J.K. Rowling in 1997 when Philosopher's Stone was first published. This particular book was signed for a small number of students from the Strathblane School in Stirlingshire. Soon after the publication of Philosopher's Stone, Joe came and talked to the school and then each of the students went home with a signed fifth printing copy of the book with a stamp Strathblane School stamped into it. The owner of this book was Alistair and he's actually quoted in the newspaper article kind of what it felt like to meet J.K. Rowling but here is that rare 1997 signature in this book. Look at that. <sighs> before J.K. Rowling evolved her signature to what it is today, that very fluid J.K. Rowling, she had a stop and go signature. So she wrote a J, a period, K, period, and then wrote out Rowling for the most part. 
as Harry Potter became more popular, she had to evolve her signature in order to sign books faster. Finding early signatures like this is extremely rare. Why? Because as I mentioned, not a lot of people knew about J.K. Rowling or Harry Potter. So she wasn't doing book signings for thousands of people. So there are not thousands of copies with the 1997 signature in it. And what's special about the Strathblane School signature, we knew that there were a small amount of kids at that school event. So not only is the signature rare because it's a 1997 signature, it's rare because it came from an event that didn't have a lot of people to begin with. As I mentioned, this is a fifth printing copy. What you do is you take the lowest number in a number line to determine the printing number. So the lowest number being a five means it is a fifth printing. Now because all of the known Strathblane signed books are fifth printings, this tells me that it was probably later in 1997 that this event took place. In the newspaper article it says June of 1997. Since the book had just been released at the end of June, they wouldn't have been on the fifth printing in June. So this book wouldn't have been available for J.K. Rowling to even sign. It wouldn't exist. It wouldn't have been printed. The article in this newspaper was actually written 10 years after the event. So this newspaper article isn't from 1997. So I'm sure there's some confusion about when it actually took place, but the previous owner of this book is mentioned, so I'm going to try and contact him. One of the things I love is knowing the history behind each of the signed books that I have, when it was signed, where it was signed, what the person that I purchased the book from was feeling at the time of meeting J.K. Rowling. It's fun to know those stories and that history. Here's a quick snippet from that article from Alistair's portion. I don't really think our primary six class from a small village in Stirlingshire knew just how lucky we were to meet J.K. Rowling long before she became a household name. It was 10 years ago, this article was written in 2007, so 1997. It was 10 years ago, just around the time of the first book was published, our teacher got hold of a proof, we read sections in class and used it for a project. So we were all mad about Harry before the book was even in the shops. Oh, that's interesting. So they had... Oh, having not met an author before, I didn't know what to expect, but J.K. Rowling was lovely. And at the end of the session, we were each given signed copies of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which made us feel special. They knew about Harry Potter before the books were even in the shops, but that still wouldn't mean that this event would have taken place in June, because if the first printing hadn't been printed, the fifth printing most definitely wouldn't have been printed at the time of the event, if it were in June. So I will see what I can do to learn the history of this book and give you an update sometime in the future. Another giant shout out to John for offering me this book, and I will of course take very good care of it. Well, that concludes this unboxing. If you have any questions about Harry Potter, Harry Potter collecting or anything else, please feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also reach me on Instagram at the Potter Collector. It may take me a little while to get back to you, but I will do my best to get back to you. Now it is time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time. I'm Lauren. And I'm Kira, And, and we're, we're from, from England. England. Keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?